being a jungler is not easy. You have a huge responsibility and many times it's the jungler's performance that determines if a match will be successful or not. Luckily for you, we will talk today about everything you need to know to become the perfect jungler. Hello my friends! Welcome back to the Ultimate Rank Up Guide series. If this is the first video that you watch from this series, make sure to check out the other ones as well. Before you ask, yes, I will talk about every rule in the next videos as well. So if you haven't subscribed yet and don't want to miss it, do it now! We start with one simple rule that many players know, but there are still so many junglers out there who completely ignore this rule. So I try to say it in the nicest way possible, so everyone understands and remembers it. <coughs> Don't fucking touch the minions in the first 5 minutes of the game. You got that? When you do this, it only has negative consequences for everyone in the team. Firstly, your allies lose a lot of golden XP, which they can only receive by minions. Unless they are clearing your jungle, what they obviously shouldn't do as well. But if you do it, it might lead them to steal your jungle creeps, which are essential for you. Next, there's a problem that you almost gain no benefit from it. The golden XP you gain is so minimal that it's a complete waste of time for you. You get more golden XP from a small jungle creep than from a full wave. So even when you don't give a damn about your teammates, what is a complete wrong mindset by the way, at least give a damn about your own golden XP. Because with this mindset, you really need to be farmed. There's only one exception where you're allowed to touch the minions. And that is after a successful gank, when you want to push the lane together with your teammates. This is your main job as a jungler by the way. Clear the jungle to have as much farm as possible, gank the enemies with your teammates and secure the objectives. Just to be clear for the beginners, the important objectives are the turrets, the turtle and the lord. And the enemy's base of course. I'm talking in almost every video about objectives, because I see so many people who are always forgetting them in their bloodlust. I will quickly show you my early jungle rotation now, because it is super important to be on level 4 before the enemy's jungler is. First you're going to clear the blue buff, followed by the lethal wanderer. The lethal wanderer is really important for multiple reasons. First, it's giving you a small buff, secondly, it's faster to clear than any other jungle creep, what leads me to thirdly, it decides most of the time which jungler reaches level 4 first. Why? It's the only jungle creep that only exists once on the battlefield. So if you're able to get it, your counterpart obviously can't. And you have the first advantage over that guy. For this, I would really recommend to save your retribution, so you can make sure to secure it. If the mid laner and Roma are smart, they're going to help you to secure it, what makes it very easy and fast to clear. If not, play it safe and retreat if three enemies show up. There's nothing worse than dying at this stage of the game already. After you hopefully secure the little Pokemon, let's see who understands that reference, you use your full combo on the like button, so this video can spread to more ML players and we are all blessed with better jungler teammates. Thanks for that. Now seriously, you move on to the teddy bear and the red buff. If you have any AoE damage skill, you can take them both down at the same time, what saves you some additional time. Time is a very important keyword here. As jungler, you have no time to waste, so use anything that you can that saves you any time. Now you're on level 4 and can start to move to the lane that is the most promising for a gank. This is also the reason why it's so important that you become level 4 ASAP. It gives you the opportunity to start the first gank. And if you're successful, you have the lead over the enemy and can start to build up your farm lead, which is obviously super important to win ganks and take the objective afterwards. A lane with a weak early game enemy is more promising than a lane with a strong early game hero or one that has great survivor skills for example. Since the weak early game heroes are most likely strong in the late game, you can also make sure to keep that hero on the low golden XP level and not let them become your worst nightmare once the late game starts. In an ideal world, your mid lane and Ruma rotate together with you, so you three go to a side lane and gank the poor enemy who is still alone. Just be aware, after you kill that poor bloke, the enemy is going to show up, so make sure to not get surprised by them. If you die now, all your hard work would have been for nothing. Also keep in mind that most junglers shine in the early game after reaching level 4, but fall off the cliff in the late game when the big gang starts. So once you're level 4, you have to be aggressive to give your team a huge lead before the late game starts. Now before you continue with the strategy in the game, we also need to talk about what jungler you should pick in which situation. Picking an assassin when the enemy has a bulky jungler and two bulky side laners is not ideal, because you can't one shot any of those. In these situations, you should also pick a jungler that can sustain a lot. On the other hand, 
If they play with another assassin and a marksman on the side lane, a assassin is a better choice than a fighter jungler. That's why it's a good idea to be one of the last picks, so you can adjust your pick to the enemy. The only exception here is if your hero is a priority pick. Now let's get back into the game. Usually after the first gank is over, the turtle is about to spawn, so you should be there once it spawns and try to secure it. Always have your retribution ready for the turtle, because it's a huge waste of time when you beat it down to 1000 HP and the enemy's jungler easily collects it while just passing by. One keyword that you always should have in mind is taking objectives. Clear the jungle, especially the buffs, rotate and gank the enemies to make sure that you and your team can take the objectives. This also has the benefit that your ally has more farm than the counterpart, so they can dominate their lane. I'm saying it again, so it really sinks in. Your keyword is taking objectives. Now, some of you may say that kills are also important, but honestly, they're not. They're just a byproduct of your job, because it doesn't really matter if you win a match with 5 or 20 kills. The only thing that matters is that you win the game. And the only way to do that is taking down the enemy's turret and that stupid looking base from the enemy. The kills are only helping you to take your objectives, because an alive enemy will defend it, unless they are really stupid. And it gives your team a gold and XP advantage. But again, this is not winning you a single game, it only makes it easier for you to gank. So after a successful gank, you always have to take an objective, otherwise it was almost for nothing. This you basically continue the whole game through. Now it's maybe also a good time to tell you what you definitely shouldn't do. Recklessly diving into your enemies without any backup from your teammates for example is a bad idea. As assassin you most likely can take down any squishy hero in a 1v1. In a 1v3 though you can kill maybe one or two enemies if you are lucky. But afterwards you're getting beaten down by the other remaining enemies. In the worst case you can't even take down one with you and basically just suicide it. So don't do that. You need to be alive for the ganks together with your allies or when the turtle is up. The opposite of this is to just farm non-stop and not taking part in any ganks. Whenever I see an assassin running around with a KDA of 000 after like 5 minutes, I'm always wondering what is this guy doing all the time? Are you too scared to engage or what? If you don't feel confident about diving into the enemy with a squishy hero, then you shouldn't pick that role. The keyword here is controlled risk. An example. You play a saber and hide in a bush in the mid lane. The enemy's mage is clearing the wave and has about 70 HP. On the top lane you see two enemy heroes and on the bot lane one. So only one enemy hero is missing on the map. For me, this will be a free kill opportunity, because unless you're completely under farmed, you can one shot any squishy mage. Afterwards, you can start to take an objective. Maybe you can push mid, take the turtle or rotate to the side lane. And since the enemy's mage is dead, your team has a numbers advantage now. Yes. It's always a risk diving into the enemy, but as I said, it's a controlled risk. If you see no enemies on the minimap, it's maybe not the best time to engage, because two other enemies could be around the corner. A little patience is required sometimes as well. The next thing you shouldn't do is not targeting the right enemies. Almost all heroes who can play in the jungle has burst damage, what means they hit the enemy one time with a huge amount of damage. This type of damage is enough to instantly kill any squishy marksman, mage or assassin. So what you definitely shouldn't do is blast all of your skills into the face of the tank. Tanks can take your full combo and will stay alive, while the enemies with burst damage can one shot you now. So don't just attack anything that crosses your way. Be smart and target the enemies you can actually kill. Last, if you play an assassin, never forget that you're a goddamn assassin. You're supposed to hide in a bush and surprise the enemy with your ambushes. That also means that camping is a viable option for you. Just don't do it too long, like waiting for one minute straight without anything happens. But when you think that there is a chance that an enemy could pass by, stay in the bush and wait what happens. An example, your allies just gank the top lane. What do you think will happen next? Correctly, either your enemies gank your poor ally on the bot lane or they come top to defend the lane. The perfect ambush opportunity. Knowing the next step of your enemy will give you a really big advantage, because like this you can successfully set ambushes. Another easy example is camping next to the blue buff. It's almost guaranteed that your counterpart will show up there, so that's another good chance for an ambush. Next, let's talk about ganks. When you attack you should go in fast, deal as much damage as quickly as you can and then get the fuck out of there. Staying in the gank 
is the worst thing that an assassin can do, because you're too squishy. There's also one big problem you have in the late game, when the 5v5 ganks start. Since you're so squishy, it's very easy for the enemy to take you down, so you should never be the first or second who jumps into a gank. But you also shouldn't be too late, once your tanks set up your enemies. You need a really good timing to be useful. If the enemy has a marksman or another really strong late game hero, that hero should be your focus in any gank from now on, even if it means that you die. Let's say you have a really long game and the enemy has a Layla with a full build, then she must be the one that you try to catch and kill. One good setup from the enemy's tank and your whole team might be dead, because in the late game, marksmen like her deal a crazy amount of damage. You as an assassin though have the tools to take her down. So even if you die after you killed her, it's a trait that is absolutely worth it. About good and bad trades, we also talk in another video of this series. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet is a lord. And there's also another simple thing that so many assassins doesn't do. You have to be the one that attacks it and stays near it to use your retribution on time. When the enemies try to contest the lord, you are the last person that should fight the enemies. I saw junglers run off to fight the enemies while the lord was already down to like 15% HP. But because of that, the enemy's jungler could just steal it. So really, don't do it. In these situations, you have to stay alive and use your retribution on time. Otherwise, this could be the point where you just throw away the game. Another thing that really helps is when you check out the whole rank up guide series now to get the full picture. Also, a huge shout out to my Patreons Mist, Sensei Dragon, Corbear, Garo OP, Lys, and Twisted J. If you want to support my work and get a lot of awesome perks, feel free to join it as well. See you over there!